Today we are going to review in detail the procedures to be followed by the pilots in the event of double hydraulic failure of the green system plus the yellow system. For this fault to activate, both hydraulic systems must have a pressure equal to or less than 1450 psi. Given this unlikely event, the situation would be the following. A continuous repetitive chime audio due to double hydraulic failure. A continuous cavalry charge audio due to disconnection of the autopilots. The master warning lights flash. Hydraulic green plus yellow system low pressure warning appears on ECAM. Both autopilots fail. Note, flight directors and autothrust remain available. Flight control or degradation. Extensive ECAM procedures with associated workload and task sharing considerations. A landing must be carried out as soon as possible. And later, significant considerations for approach and landing. And landing in abnormal configuration. The flight crew must perform the following actions. The first pilot who notice the failure, should reset the master warning to turn off master warning lights, and audible warnings. The pilot monitoring. Announce the title of the failure, in this case, hydraulic, green plus yellow system low pressure. The pilot flying, flies. Take control of the plane manually as both autopilots fail. Will maneuver with care to avoid high hydraulic demand on the remaining systems. Indicate, I have control and communications, and, when appropriate, request ECAM actions. The pilot flying, navigates. Depending on the phase of flight, it may be appropriate to change the mode of the autothrust to selected mode, for that the pilot flying should use the appropriate standard callout. To keep control of the navigation, the crew can hold at his present position, or at a nearby waypoint. Please note that the crew should not divert, until the crew's portion of the summary has been completed. The pilot flying, communicates. Declare Mayday to ATC. And later, when some time is available remember to advise the crew, the passengers, and the company. The pilot monitoring must perform the ECAM actions first, and then review the status. A clear reading of status is essential to properly sequence actions during the approach. When the pilot monitoring completes the ECAM actions, then you should review the QRH summary for this failure. The first step with the QRH summary, is the cruise section, that helps the flight crew to assess the situation, and to select an appropriate runway for landing through fuel analysis, and landing performance computation. This is an excellent time to apply your decision-making model, like TDODA, that we reviewed in a previous video. When the landing airport has been selected, then it's time for the approach preparation. For this, the flight crew reviews the status page, and they use the approach, landing, and go around sections to support this approach preparation. Pilot monitoring inserts data as normal when preparing an approach. Then, manually insert the calculated V approach. And then change the landing setting to configuration 3. Now, it is time for the approach briefing. The pilot flying should first conduct a near-standard approach briefing that includes the review of the main items in the status, as the approach speed, approach configuration, and flap lever position, and that all the approach procedures actions are completed. With the help of the approach section of the summary, the pilot flying reviews use of the selected speeds on the FCU for flaps extension the landing gear gravity extension procedure. And, for this specific failure, is recommended to review the non-standard sequence to configure for landing, as the crew must set the final flaps configuration first, and then, must wait for stabilization at V approach to lower the landing gear. With the help of the landing section of the summary, the pilot flying reviews the special considerations for the flare, for example, tail strike awareness, and braking and steering considerations. With the help of the go-around section of the summary, the pilot flying reviews how to proceed in case of go-around, go-around call-out, aircraft configuration and speed. After the approach briefing is complete, it will soon be time to make the approach checklist. We are almost there. Now is time to properly configure the aircraft for landing. Remember that with this double fail, slats are slow, so take your time. 
To perform the approach, the flight crew should refer to the approach section. The pilot flying asks for speed selected VFE next minus 5 knots, using the standard callouts. If the autothrust is in managed mode, the pilot flying must say, pull speed 225 knots. If the autothrust is in selected mode, the pilot flying must say, set speed 225 knots. When below VFE next, we'll ask for flaps 1. Flaps 2 and 3 are achieved in the same way. When the gear is extended, in this case using the landing gear gravity extension, direct law became active, and the mean elevator position becomes the reference for centered side stick position. Therefore, the procedure requires to wait for stabilization at the approach, before landing gear extension. When the aircraft is in final configuration, the pilot monitoring can quickly review the landing and go around sections as a reminder. For example, tail strike awareness. Reverses. Braking. Nose wheel steering. No landing gear retraction in the case of a go around. Finally, the pilot monitoring must review the status page and verify that all approach procedures actions have been completed. Remember, for braking you have yellow accumulator pressure only. At least seven full brake applications are available. Following a yellow hydraulic system failure, the parking brake may be inoperative due to yellow accumulator low pressure. Remember, keep studying, fly safe, and always follow your airline's SOPs.